Hello, everyone. So today's speaker is uh, Sarah Haim Lubchansky. She is a documentation architect, um, and she always preferred to work with technical people. And it worked for her because she's now managing her um, documentation issues, and she's helping her coworkers with their doc. Um, she has founded uh, the French Association of PHP Users in Lyon. Uh, she's a co-founder of numerous organizations like the Game Dev Party and the First Coding Coute at Lyon. Um, she is part of local tech communities and she loves to build projects, helping others. Please welcome Sarah on stage. Bonjour, bonsoir. So I'm the last talk of the day. It will be okay. After uh, hearing from me, you can go home and, or drink a beer. But before that, I um, propose let's make it better now together. And I'm talking about the documentation. First, um, he already presented me, but I want to add something. So I'd I am a documentation architect. Previously, I was a technical writer, so really writing the doc. And before that, I was a PHP developer. It's my background. <laughs> you can laugh. I don't care. <laughs> it paid my bills during numerous years, so it's OK. I like Monty Python, riding my bike, eating pizzas, and learn new things every day. So I'm really happy with my job and with being here. About that, how I got here. I read many documentation. It's part of my job. I analyze it, and I'm training my colleagues to ask them to help them to do the best documentation they can for uh, my company, uh, Bedrock. And I stumbled upon the <laughs> Postgres documentation, and I'm using it um, as a as an example, but as a bad example. <laughs> Especially one page. I talked about it uh, to Leticia Avro uh, when she came uh, in, a, in a conference. Uh, and <laughs> she told me, oh, it's interesting. Maybe you can tell this to the PostgreSQL community. <laughs> So here I am. I have a little disclaimer before. I'm not using Postgres right now, because I'm no more a uh, developer. Uh, so it's, not, uh, it's just for my uh, interest that I'm reading the Postgres documentation. And for me today, uh, Postgres is a database system. OK, but it's what I use as a counter example. So I have no. Uh, uh, how to say that? It's not the, the thing I, uh, I love the most in the world, but I want to show you what... Ah, sapristi. Uh, it's... Hop, hop, hop. So this page what is the, the one... Uh, uh, that is a bad documentation because it's a wall of text. You don't want to read that because it's too much for, uh, for, uh, for everyone. So today, I want to, uh, uh, to make a little introduction about what, is, what can we expect about documentation today in, two in 2023, what are the best practices, what is common. Then I will dig into the Postgres documentation by uh, topic, uh, basically architecture, content, and the contribution part, because it's open source. And it was the first thing Leticia told me. In fact, you can contribute to the documentation if it's not uh, good enough. <laughs> and at the end, I want to give you my conclusion. It's the reason I'm here on stage to talk. So nowadays, documentation, and it's the main thing to know about my work and my point of view about the documentation, it's a tool. Uh, meaning you can do everything by hand, yourself, sure. You can build IKEA furniture without the booklet. Uh, some of you maybe are doing this. Uh, maybe you can screw 
without a screwdriver. Personally, I prefer to use it, but it's a tool. And today, in documentation for the architecture part, and it's literally my job to organize the documentation, uh, we, we as uh, IT people, expecting something well organized, and the framework I um, recommend to my colleagues and to you for your project, professional or personal uh, software projects, it's called Diataxis. The name is not very memorable, but it's interesting. The concept is a framework to tidy your documentation. Uh, this is the website. It's in English, in fact. It's the Marie Kondo for your documentation, basically. I have a picture to show you to explain a little bit further. It's the idea is to organize the documentation by type. And there is four types defined, so you can memorize four things. I count on you on this. Uh, there is explanation, reference, tutorial, how to guide. I will begin by uh, explanation on the bottom left. <laughs> so in orange, it's understanding oriented. It's the part where you are explaining the concept, the history of the project, what people have to know about PostgreSQL to uh, use it. On the right, you have the reference. It's more uh, like a dictionary, a glossary. It's information oriented. And on top, you have tutorials and how to guides. The difference between the two of them, it's tutorial, it's learning oriented, like uh, how to use post PostGIS. We just saw a talk about it. And how to is more a task. Uh, how to uh, grant privileges to a user. I think this morning someone talked about uh, things like that in uh, Postgres. So basically, if you are using that, there is more clarity, especially for the writers of the documentation, because when you write something, you know the type and you know where to put it. I have uh, examples to show you. So I selected some uh, technical documentation. I will begin, it's very small, by Kubernetes. So on the left, on the menu, you see concept, task, tutorials, reference, and the contribute part. We also have it on uh, uh, Postgres. And for example, in tasks, I have uh, something about configure pod and containers assign CPU resources to containers and pods. And in concepts, I have what is a workload, uh, how, what, what storage does mean in the uh, Kubernetes context. I also selected the Microsoft SQL Server because it's the same field uh, than Postgres. And on the left, I'm, I'm showing you the menu and not the content. You are uh, viewing quick starts, tutorials, concepts, migration guide, how to, um, and then the reference. And also another website that I, um, that I find interesting, it's the MDN, so it's more for developers, it's the Mozilla Developer Network. There is the reference part with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and other things. There is the guide part, and there is no tutorials or how to. So you are not, it's not mandatory to have the four uh, categories for your, for your uh, documentation. Also, still in the introduction part, today in uh, Doc, we benefit from the UX science and research about the personas. It's like role-playing game characters. You're defining, you're defining people, fictional people, with their skills, their needs, their experience with your software, and you are uh, testing against your software to see if it's OK. In terms of documentation, you have the audience. It's about the reader of your documentation. And the audience of the, by example, PostgreSQL documentation will uh, ask, what is PostgreSQL? Will it solve my problems? What features? are available, how much it costs, how do I get started, how do I troubleshoot if I have issues, 
because I could have issues. And so uh, the audience is very important. Who is reading your documentation is important. If you don't know yet, because I, I think I didn't tell this, uh, I am a Twitter addict. <laughs> I am now a Mastodon addict. It's not so easy. Uh, and I think we, ha we are in a social media era, and regarding the softwares, Twitter or Mastodon, even uh, blog posts, are used to seek help, get advices, and compare solutions. So, as an addict, I too often rely on tweets, so I went on Twitter to see if the PostgreSQL documentation was any good, because I was not satisfied, but maybe, maybe I was not alone. I was quite alone in this game, because uh, I found good, thing, good things about it. So Andrew uh, tweeted in 2021, Postgres is incredible documentation how to build an RDBMS that happens to come with a production-ready reference implementation and extension framework. So he's very happy with uh, Postgres. Then we have uh, Richard in 2021 also. It's difficult to overstate what a great experience interacting with the Postgres OSS community, it's you guys, is. Mailing list is friendly and helpful. Source code is beautiful and understandable. Documentation is thorough and useful, very motivating. So people are quite happy with it. Andrew again, yeah, but just me still over here being amazed with how good the documentation and community for Postgres are. One time, yeah, you can be satisfied with yourself, in fact, for, for this part. <laughs> uh, CockroachDB asked, to their community. What is your favorite resource for learning SQL? And uh, Hemant, I think we, we already quote his name uh, before in talks. Postgres documentation, just that. And uh, type female uh, is just living her life in accordance with Postgres documentation in 2022 in June. So <laughs> it's quite, uh, quite good. <laughs> Maybe I am alone in my uh, sorrow with the documentation. So now, in Postgres documentation, maybe we can uh, look a little uh, closer. Regarding the architecture, there is sections. They are, so it's organized. There is many, many chapters. They are organized in sections. So the section, you know it, you know them. Uh, tutorials, SQL language, server administration, client. Uh, uh, and internals. And when I say there is many chapters, there is many chapters, so many. As a former developer, I was looking for the section uh, for a developer, and I was not finding it because there is a scary things like server programming. As a PHP developer, I don't want to create a server. I just want to use a database, but it's in fact the part I was looking for. So, a little confused there. Uh, plus, I have a favorite uh, chapter, of course. It's the Appendix J, because it's about the documentation. But, because Leticia told me uh, you can contribute, so I was okay, I will look in the documentation how to contribute. Uh, the Appendix J is telling me that I can build the documentation in HTML, man page, PDF, plain text file, and syntax, syntax check, sorry. Uh, so why not? I found later, later than that the, the file are uh, named SGML, but in fact, it's not SGML. Uh, so you have to tweak your uh, code editor because it's XML. I don't know why you are, uh, you know, hurting yourself like that, but why not? <laughs> yeah, I know history, but... <laughs> and in the uh, J4 documentation authoring, there is a sub-chapter about Emacs. Maybe I have to use Emacs to write the documentation. Unsure of that, unsure, but... Unsure. Uh, and there is a style guide. It's very good, in fact, to have a style guide. I saw the preface. I think uh, no one is reading it. 
it's a shame because the preface is describing every part. It's the section, part one, part two, and uh, it's here that I found that the developer part is the, the five server thing. And other thing about the organization of the documentation, so there is a whole part about SQL, but there is also something about SQL here and there. So I know it's everywhere, it's basic, but I'm a little confused of what is what. So in my opinion, maybe we can improve something about the description of the section, the thing in the preface. Uh, when you are browsing the documentation, it's the header of the documentation. When I am in the chapter five uh, data definition, maybe I have there is something missing of uh, with the yeah the description. Maybe organizing things by type of content could be tried. Maybe it's not the solution, but maybe and maybe some section could be renamed. Maybe. And uh, yes, uh, there is a mailing list. Uh, Daniel uh, told you about uh, this kind of mailing list. There is one uh, about documentation. So in 2000, a reorg of the documentation was discussed. It was 23 years ago. So some things were done, well, well, but maybe we can still do things. The documentation date, it's in the bottom of the page. Uh, is stating that the documentation is 26 years old. I know you don't change things so quickly because it's history that you have XML named HTML or things like that. And I know that uh, BC break is a real thing, even if in content in the documentation. So yeah, I understand that you have to take your time, but I'm happy to have people uh, listening to me because maybe step by step we can uh, the thing can evolve. Another thing I found on Twitter with the very happy people was Patrick. Patrick, Patrick. Patrick uh, tweeted in 2022, weirdly, sometimes I avoid the official Postgres documentation when I'm looking for how to do something because it's too detailed. The easy quick answer via Stack Overflow or one of those SEO -ed tutorial sites is often good enough and faster to make use of. To me, it's a signal that there is something uh, missed with the documentation. Uh, when your user is uh, going to Stack Overflow and not on the documentation because it's too detailed, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a signal. Maybe you need more uh, too long don't read or some summaries, some condensed, some flashcards, maybe? And in fact, MySQL does that. So, sorry, <laughs> I have to. They are doing excerpts from manual, and it's available in PDF, so it's uh, documentation to go. So like you are in the metro, in the train, you can uh, read the documentation. You don't do that. I'm doing that, but maybe you are not. And if you want uh, to know more about the partitioning, and in this uh, documentation, you have links to the full documentation in these excerpts. So maybe it's an idea to, to steal uh, from them. They, they, maybe they stole from Postgres, so you can steal back. In the UX and design uh, part, the tone and jokes, uh, bravo, it's very well done. There are jokes about dates. You know it if you read the documentation. Uh, they are non-intrusive, so if you don't get the jokes, you still get the documentation, so it's good. Yeah, it's important, you know? Sometimes there is cultural jokes, and uh, if you don't get it and you don't have the content, it's a shame. Uh, the code examples are good, even if it's not uh, colored or uh, in bold. The keywords are, are not in bold, the SQL keyword in uh, in the documentation are not in bold. Maybe I should have uh, put a screenshot, but I think you know that because you are reading it every day. The content is good. There is a callout. A callout, it's a warning, but it's quite monotonous in my opinion. For example, in the MongoDB documentation, there is many callouts and colors. So you know I love color 
maybe it's too much. And again, the documentation is a tool. It's not a toy. It's not here to entertain you. It's here to be useful. Overall, maybe there is too much clutter. Maybe you need a doc about the documentation. If it's the case, you are not alone. SQL Server also needed a doc, and there is a documentation, sorry, there is a navigation guide for the, their documentation. Maybe you don't have to steal it, this. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I have still a few topics to, to talk about. Oh, sorry. The versioning, so it's something expected by the readers of the documentation. What about the versioning? Uh, something that, that is very good on the Postgres documentation, it's that the documentation is delivered with the software itself. So you install Postgres, you have the documentation. This is good. Uh, on the website, there is archive versions accessible. OK, this is good. But when I went the first time, on this page, I was a little confused. You have the answer, but I have not as a beginner. Why so many versions are available? I know the current is, is uh, uh, I know what is the current one, but I have uh, five last versions available, and I don't know why. Uh, yeah, but I am not not sure. Uh, the latest is visible, but not could be more visible. Ex uh, especially when you come from another, an external website. Uh, I'm sorry because the image is very small, but here it's a screenshot of uh, the header of the documentation, and it's the version 12, but it's not written anywhere that it's not the latest version caution. And if it's a link from the Stack Overflow, because I prefer to go to Stack Overflow <laughs> than the official documentation, then uh, I'm trapped in the version 12, and maybe I miss the new features. And it's not providing the best quality of documentation, and it's not reflecting the quality of PostgreSQL. It's, it's that that I'm telling you. It's not reflecting the quality of PostgreSQL to have uh, these flows, it's not horrible, but these flows in your documentation. I have an example of a uh, versioning displayed, uh, in my opinion, very well. It's Docusaurus. It's a tool to make documentation. Just on top of the title, routing, there is the, document, the, sorry, the version displayed. Plus, on top right, you have the drop-down if you want to change uh, which uh, version you are viewing. OK, I have only two other uh, things to tell you. I have something to tell you about images. So I will not talk about icons or screenshots. Screenshots are very painful to maintain in the documentation because you have to uh, maintain them up to date. Plus, uh, if you have many operating systems, it's a nightmare, but diagrams. The diagrams are good for the theory to explain. In Kubernetes, I want to know what is a pod, what is a container. A diagram could explain that to me. Plus, I am not alone in this. I'm a visual learner, and I am not alone to be a visual learner. In uh, DuckDB, so I think they are doing things about the database. I think they are open source. On the, so it's the SQL uh, documentation of the DB. The group by having closed, there is a schema. And to me, it's very uh, clear. And it's complementary. Not sure. It's, uh, you can have this and the textual version. It's not this or that. You can have both. So you have the visual learner uh, with you. Because in the Postgres doc, there is also an uh, explanation about the group by and having closed, and there is an example. But maybe a diagram in addition could be cool. And talking about diagrams, how many images are in the Postgres documentation? Do you know? Almost. <laughs> Three. Three images. Yeah, in the whole documentation. On the plus, on the positive side, the documentation is very lightweight, because not too much images, many, many texts, very lightweight. Uh, one of the three 
one of the three images. The, the three images is the gene internals uh, system. Uh, it's that. Uh, maybe the color choice is, I don't know if you are colorblind. There is 10% of people being colorblind. So maybe something to improve here. Uh, so, for diagrams, there is something about the tool. It is the readme of the, the readme of the images directory in the SGML SLC doc uh, directories in the GitHub, in the no, not GitHub Git repository. Sorry, uh, there is graphviz or data recommended, so you have to learn this tool. And uh, when I wanted to know more about uh, the diagram, maybe you can add in the Postgres documentation, I found this diagram. And when I displayed it the first time, someone told me uh, it's wrong. This diagram is wrong. Uh, I don't know which or why, but it's the thing I am uh, finding when I'm searching on the internet for diagrams. And if you want to have proper diagrams, put them in the documentation. Do them and put them in the documentation. Otherwise, people like me uh, will find this and add, add diagram, add better diagram. And I am not alone in this uh, diagram need because in 2018, uh, so it's Pavel answering to Jurgen uh, saying, OK, uh, for diagram and images, we have the issue to have a defable thing and not a binary file uh, comparison because of the SCM, because of Git. And be, uh, so we have to do that. So maybe it's about the tool, XML-based diagram, like graphics. And uh, uh, sometimes I recommend my uh, colleagues, uh, Mermaid GA. It's hard to say. Mermaid GS, Mermaid JA. You describe and you have uh, diagrams. And uh, with the bad uh, diagrams I found, there is also the, the fact that the tutorial is illustrated. It's uh, pretty. And uh, the official doc is text only, so the visual learners could skip the official doc and learn maybe wrong things. There is still uh, the textual content is very good. As the, I don't know, uh, it was Richard or in the tweet, it's detailed, the row. There is many, many things, too detailed, but there is many things. There is still wall of text. I will not click on these links, but trust me, it's wall of text. And maybe it's reassuring to have a wall to lean on, but I am, I am proposing to, I am to break the wall, like Pink Floyd, uh, because there is uh, tutorials more clear than the official documentation. And maybe we could improve by adding images, diagrams. Uh, bullet points are OK. And the use of bold and then faces is also very OK, because it's not entertainment. You have to, uh, it's a tool, and you want to scan the documentation. I have still two topics to, with things to say about it. About the beginners, today, we welcome the beginners by getting started overview. And Daniel did a very good talk about how to contribute and the beginners. Uh, so I will not repeat what he was saying. I just wanted to say that sometimes different media is OK. Airtable, by example, in their documentation are using videos. But it's very, very uh, time consuming to make this. And you want to guide your users so they learn with your documentation. And about that, there is a talk uh, by Leticia about the documentation. The talk is good. Go, go see that. But the fact that it exists, it a sig it's a signal that the documentation is maybe not clear enough. And my suggestion, it's just like this talk is by profile, you know, the UX personas, maybe something, a page like, you are a, a, a software developer, choose your own adventure, and maybe we can do something about it. And my last topic is about the contribution. 
So I will up. So the good you can contribute is very clear. There is a Git repository. Daniel did a, talk, a whole talk about the contribution. Uh, maybe some communities are using many channels. I am a Twitter addict. Remain. Uh, I remind you. And events like Hacktoberfest to, uh, to gather more contribution. Maybe you can do that. The contributor guide, I uh, have had hard time to find it, but I found it in the wiki at last. Um, sorry, hop. I see my time running and I don't want you to miss the beer. Uh, and the thing that bothered me the most on the Postgres community, it's not very clear the contribution process, who's in charge of the review, and what is the update cycle for the documentation? Is it every release, every month, every day, every commit fest? I didn't found, fi find the information, so maybe I'm quite dumb. It's possible, it's possible. And maybe it's not so obvious, and maybe other people than me are looking for this information, the governance. Oh, and by the way, I found the to-do list on the wiki on the do documentation part, and there is two items. Modify the default uh, configuration. I don't have this kind of knowledge. And the second one is about uh, support for N national character string. Very, very specific. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe you want to delete this to-do list. It's not accurate. Oh. I almost forgot the form in the footer. If you find a typo in the documentation, you can fill a form. For me, it's not very... Um, I don't enjoy filling forms, OK? <laughs> I don't enjoy doing my taxes. Same, I don't enjoy filling forms. So maybe here, put a link towards the wiki or the Git repository. I don't know, but... Um, uh, the, the, I repeat, the governance is not clear. Form and... F sorry from an external point of view. In conclusion, I hope you are not too depressed or too <laughs> angry uh, against me. Uh, a good documentation uh, should, should do this. Gain of time, being helpful, communicate your choices, and teach your best practices. The Postgres documentation is not horrible. It's old and it shows. <laughs> it's good for my beverage to have old-fashioned, but for the documentation, not so much. And the content is written by experts, you in this room, and for experts. So the beginner part is totally uh, missing, maybe not totally, but it's mostly missing the beginner part, the first step to help me uh, to get at the, at the proper level. So the community is very welcoming, but the beginners could still struggle. And my main takeaway is a question. Do you want to lower the entry bar for the beginners? If yes, maybe the documentation could be a, a good start, a good starting point to lower the entry bar. So more diagrams, <laughs> welcoming the doc contributors with maybe easy tasks. Uh, an orientation page by personas, maybe renaming sections, I don't know. Merci beaucoup. That's all from me. Uh, merci, thanks to Leticia and the Postgres team. And uh, if you have uh, any question in the little time, <laughs> thank you for your attention. Maybe it's that. <laughs> wow. I was anticipating this talk. Thank you so much. That was like uh, awesome. And um, okay, it's not a, 
Okay, it's again not a question, but I recently wrote a blog post which made many people unhappy because when I was researching uh, the uh, content for like my permissions problems, I came across one part in documentation and I will only read half of it, okay? And I suggested my readers to read it out loud, okay? So it goes. Revoke can also be done by a role that is not the owner of the affected object, but is a member of the role that owns the object, or <laughs> the member of the role that uh, holds privileges with grant options on the object. In this case, the command is uh, performed as if, as though it was issued by the <laughs> containing, <laughs> containing role that actually owns the object or holds the privileges with grant uh, options. For example, if table T1 is owned by role G1, or which role um, you uh, one is a member, then you one can revoke privilege on T1 that are recorded as being granted by G1. This would include grants made by U1 as well by other members of the role G1. So, but, but, the, uh, but that, that's, that's like mo not a hor most horrible piece. The horrible part is that when I cited, the, and that's only half of what I cited, so like second comment was, sorry, Hetty, it actually made, perf made perfect sense to me. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. I think a diagram is not sufficient for this, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the person uh, that, that, that wrote it uh, is a fan of Monty Python uh, Holy Grail with the Saint Grenade of Antioch. You have to open it at three, two is not the number, four is not the number, five is too much, <laughs> something like that. Uh, in this case, uh, is it possible to reopen a merge request <laughs> and to have it reviewed again? No, it's a real question to rewrite the thing. It's for experts, but you are an expert. I'm an expert, but I just put like a Yeah, but for a beginner, like uh, you just want to know what are the privileges attached to a user or a table, something like that. Maybe we can improve the documentation. Maybe. Hi. Uh, what tool uh, to edit uh, PostgreSQL documentation? Emacs? You, yeah. you talk about Emacs. Is that the only way? <laughs> Please. <laughs> how do you? How do I uh, write or how do I read? Uh, write. Uh, or change or edit uh, or work on documentation with Emacs. Apparently, it's XML based, so so you can write write it by any XML editor. Okay. It's just that only Emacs is documented. Okay. So if you don't use Emacs, you are on your own with your favorite XML editor. So it's quite okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But it, it was fun, funny to me to fun to me to to see that there is only Emacs, and maybe the the others are yes, are not doing. Yes, me. <laughs> but it's it's in X, It's oh sorry, <laughs> it's XML based. XML. Okay. Thanks. You can do it. I trust you. I have a question myself. Ula. Well, thank you very much for this because I actually do that myself in the Haskell community and at my company. Um, do you feel like you've had to get a mandate from the governance of your team or the Postgres project to take part in, you know, renewing the documentation or at least, you know, um, an acting revolution in terms of uh, writing and reading documentation. Do you think you've had to get approval by higher instances, or is this something that you, you arrived with it and it was welcomed and uh, appreciated? In the Postgres documentation? The and even in your, at, your, at your workplace, even. Because I know many workplaces are very hierarchical, and you know um, documentation is often left alone, but you need uh, to get ah. pre-approval, that kind of stuff. 
what was your experience in the end? With, docu with writing documentation, you mean? Yeah, introducing uh, the uh, taxes, for example. I was a developer kind of and I uh, turned to the documentation uh, role because uh, nobody wanted to do it. So I was, uh, I like documentation, I can do it, maybe people uh, will pay me to do it. Uh, it worked, apparently. Uh, Which is a big power move, by the way. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. really. I'm, I'm and, and in fact, uh, my uh, um, uh, discourse is to say if you have a good documentation, you can sell more. So the return on investment is worth it. So let's improve the quality of the documentation. Uh, but yeah, my, some of my colleagues hate writing documentation. But they also hate when the documentation is not good. So maybe they have to connect the two IDs and <laughs> see what is the the <laughs> like the chicken and egg. <laughs> no, but you're you're absolutely right. The the world is divided between people who want to read good documentation and people who hate writing documentation in the yes, first place. Yes. Uh, but the role of the technical writer exists, and uh, there is people. Uh, Specialized in communication. It's a communication role to, yeah, the, just like you, may, some of you maybe do trainings, are trainers, so just like that. Thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you, Sarah. So. Up, up.